Welcome, guys, to our online service. We're so excited to worship with you. Join along with us.
the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, He is my soul, because You are good. You're good. Oh, You are good. You're good. Oh, You are.
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever
Over these past couple of weeks, we have been looking at the events leading up to Easter, leading up to the ultimately Jesus sacrificing himself for you and me. And week one, we looked at the last supper. We looked at Passover and a lot of what Passover is, is the Jewish people remembering what God has done for them. And you see Jesus is sitting around with his best friends and he's just, he's talking to them and he's hanging out with them. And they're remembering the years ago about how God rescued the Israelites from slavery in Egypt and always remembering what God has done for us is so important during Easter. And then last week, we looked about what Jesus talked about when he was sitting around with his disciples. What did he say in those final hours? What did he pray for? And he actually prayed for unity. Unity, not only amongst the 12 disciples, but amongst all believers and anyone who comes to faith through their message. And today we're actually going to fast forward from the last supper. Jesus and his disciples are no longer sitting around a table. They're heading up to the Mountain of Olives into the Garden of Gethsemane. And we're going to pick up the story in Luke chapter 22. And here's what it says. It says, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. And he withdrew about a stone's throw from beyond them. He knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing Take this cup from me. You see how vulnerable Jesus is being in this moment? I mean, think about this. Jesus isn't surprised by anything. He knows what's going to happen next. He knows that the pain is coming. The torture is coming. He knows that he's about to be mocked and beaten and arrested and ultimately crucified on a cross. And he also knows that there is no other way. And he knows that he just needs strength right now. He's basically begging God, God, if there's another way, please let's do that. If there's possibly something else we can do, please let's do that. It talks about later in this passage, how stressed out Jesus is feeling. And to the point where he's actually so stressed that he starts sweating blood. This is often caused by acute fear or extreme stress, which I'm pretty sure Jesus qualifies in this situation. But in this moment, Jesus is showing you and me, it's okay to be honest and vulnerable with God. We don't need to hide our emotions. We don't need to hide from our pain. We don't need to hide from our confusion. We, he can handle everything we throw at him. He wants us to be honest with how you and I are feeling when we're frustrated or scared or confused. You see, all of our big doubts, all the things that we worry about, all the things that we doubt can be given over to him. Things like, God, can I trust you? God, are you even there? God, why is this happening to me? God, why is this happening in our world. There isn't a single honest question that God cannot handle. Yet you and I often feel scared to pose those questions to God. And so we hold back in our prayer. And Jesus is showing us how not to hold back, how to be honest with God. That is what our prayer life has to look like. We have to be honest with God about what is going on in our hearts, what is going on in our minds, what is going on in our life around us. But the most amazing thing about this prayer is this is not how Jesus' prayer ends. He doesn't just stop there. He isn't just honest with God and then cuts off the prayer. It's almost in the same breath that he is being honest with God. He follows up this honesty with this. He says, not yet, not my will, but yours be done. I know I want something else right now, but I'm going to sacrifice it for you. I'm going to sacrifice everything I want, everything I desire, everything I need to accomplish your will, to accomplish your plan. Do I want to experience what I'm about to experience? No, I don't but I'm going to sacrifice everything that I want for the will of God to carry out his love for his people. You see minutes before Jesus is going to be arrested, 
tortured, beaten, and killed. Jesus is essentially telling God in this moment, I trust you. I trust you no matter what happens. I trust you no matter what the future holds. Even when circumstances don't make sense, even when our future is unclear, even if we don't want to walk the path that's ahead of us. You see, we can choose to trust God no matter what. And you see, the thing about all of this is trusting God is more about trusting who God is than what his plan is. You see, you will have times in your life that you don't fully understand God's plan. You won't fully understand what his will is for your life. And in those moments, it can be really hard to trust in God, right? Because we don't know what lies ahead to us in the future. But instead of trusting a confusing plan that you might not understand, we need to trust who God is. You see, the Bible talks about who God is all the time. It says that God is good. It says it like this in Psalm 34. It says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. God is good. In 1 John 4, it explicitly tells us that God is is love. So God is good. God is love. And then it also talks about how God is powerful. And then it shows us how powerful he is in in Psalms. It says this, wait for it. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Their starry host by the breath in his mouth. So basically he's saying God is so powerful that he created the heavens with words, the stars with his breath. That's how powerful he is. We can hold on to who God is when we don't understand his plan. When we don't understand the future, we can hold on to all those things. When it feels like our life is changing by the minute, we can trust in a God that does not change. We have to be honest with God about what is going on in our hearts and our minds. And we also have to trust in his plan. But trusting in his plan, I understand, can be difficult. So instead of that, trust in who God is. God is good. God is love. God is powerful. You see, in some of Jesus' famous last words, Jesus chose to trust who God is. Even when his circumstances were not ideal. And the question is, will you do the same today? Will you choose to trust who God is today? Let's pray. God, we are so grateful for this example that you gave us. God, we kind of imagine the agony and the stress and the fear that is going on with Jesus in this moment as he's praying. But God, even throughout all this, he gives us an amazing example of being honest with you, but then also trusting in your plan and your will and trusting in who you are. And God, we pray the same thing today because God, we don't understand the plan ahead of us. We don't understand our circumstances. We don't understand what happens next week, next month or next year. But God, we are going to trust in you because you are good You are a loving God and you are a powerful God. God, we are so incredibly grateful for that. So in this moment, I pray that we would all trust in you. God, we love you and we thank you. That was our service today, guys. We would love to get you guys stay plugged in on social media throughout this week and we'll have a brand new service for you guys Wednesday night at 6.30. We'll see you guys then.